So finally I started messing around with things. It wasn't updating. Finally, after all that time, after about two hours of messing around, guess what? It updated. Why did it update? Because, like I said earlier, an RSS feed that people have for their show, basically it's, you know, like Spreaker.com forward slash TGIF show. And that's your RSS feed and that takes you strictly to my show, whether it's on Apple, Google, Spreaker, or wherever else uh, it's at, including Podcast Portal. Wherever it's at, it takes you to my show. Now, with that being said, I'm all over the internet. So is Evangel. They're all over the internet. Now, with that being said, that it's like if you take a tube and you fill it with water, but you make that tube a mile long, that water is going to take some time before it gets to the end of that tube a mile down the road and coming out. It's not gonna. It's not gonna be fast. Just like with the RSS feed, it it doesn't quickly do things when you got so many other avenues that's doing it at first. So when it gets to the bigger stuff first, then finally gets to the podcast portal, then it will update. But see, I was so impatient that I had to have it right then and there. Why is it not working? Why is it not updating? My listeners, this and my listeners, then they need a new update. And blah, blah, blah. finally, it updated. And God tell me. Just let it sit there for a minute. Once it sits there, it'll do its thing and eventually will update. So that being said, with me being so impatient about it, I got so worked up over nothing. So see, God commands us to be patient. Because if, if if you're not patient, Steve, that can cause a lot of a lot of grief in your life and heartache and you you get frustrated over little things that don't even matter, amen. Amen. If you want to say something, just start talking. Well, if you're impatient, how are you going to hear from God? You can't. No matter impatient does, it brings the devil in. Impatient Open actually, doors. yep, it opens the door for the devil to come in because the devil wants to be impatient. He wants you to be so flustered over this, that, and the other thing because, oh, well, it's not working. Your listeners won't be able to this. And so here, here's the it's thing. The devil- the devil's name is impatient. <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask you a question. By being impatient, I know impatient is a sin already. It's all, it is a sin no matter which way you look at it. But by being impatient, will that cause you to sin? Yeah. Not the impatient itself, because impatient itself is a sin, yes. But will it cause you to commit other sins by being impatient? Yeah, you're not thinking straight. You're gonna put the mind of Christ on. Absolutely, and not only that. Here's the first. Here's why I ask you this: because if you're impatient, say, say, uh, your car decides to break down for some odd reason, okay, and you need a new timing belt. That's a very easy thing to work, to to fix. You just put a timing belt on, as far as I know. But <laughs> while you're doing, it, while your car broke down, the timing belt went. You're all frustrated. You try to get that in there. It's not working for you, right? The devil goes, well, it ain't working for you. It ain't this. It ain't that. Next thing you know, some hussy's walking down the road. You peep at her for a minute. You go, and now that you're so frustrated, you don't care about anything else. And now she starts walking down that road. The first thing is you're going to think is I'm so pissed off right now. Ooh, look at her. See what I'm saying? Being impatient can cause you to commit other sins as well because now you're so frustrated with this one thing you're being impatient about. The devil sneaks in other things into your into your little path and says, look at that now. Right. See what I'm saying? So being impatient can cause you to commit other sins as well. Because you so, I mean, how many times, and I'll admit this myself, how many times have you gotten mad and said or did something that you regret later on? A few days ago. You see what I'm saying? And that's why, why, why did that happen? I mean, uh, when the belt on the water pump and then I, and some other screw and I lost, it was getting dark. I lost it. I couldn't find it. So I put it right in front of me, Lord. And I got patient and I looked, I looked for about an hour, two hours, it was right in front of me. I couldn't see it. I go back in the morning where I could see more and I found it finally. Let me guess, we're right in front of you. I went out and bought me a, another screw just like it. 
But see, when you're impatient, you do things, say things that you regret later on. And I do as well. I say things or regret things that I do and say later on because I was so impatient about what the situation was that the devil caused me to do other things that I shouldn't have been doing. So with being patient too, and get over tired. Right. And God tells you to take a rest, then you don't take a rest because you're impatient. Absolutely. And see, one of the reasons why the Bible, the, that God commands us to be patient in his word is because he knows that when his people become unpa- impatient, they start to get upset. They start to get mad and angry at things and start saying things. So that's one of the reasons why he commands us to be patient is because then if we're patient, yes, we're going through some stuff. Give it to God and let God deal with it. But when you're impatient, all this other stuff starts building up. And so what used to be spilt milk is now mountains. You make mountains out of molehills when you are impatient. And we know that we don't want no mountains at all in our lives. We want to cast those mountains into the sea. When you're impatient, you're not getting the best from God. Oh, absolutely you're not. And like, like I said... When I drink the milk that's fresh... But you're so impatient, pretty soon it's going to taste sour. Right. And like I said, when I was so, I was so impatient about creating this app, the update, and blah, 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 and it's not this and it's not that, if I would have just left that alone and waited for about another, you know, five, ten minutes, and then went back in there, I guarantee you it would have updated all by itself. But see, I was so impatient about it's not working. I had to hang up from talking, talking to my mom on Duo. Then I had to this and I had to that, and I was... a Finally, after about a few minutes, it finally updated. So, if I had just been patient and not been frustrated, everything would have worked. Because it's, you want it your way, and you want it to get it done as fast as possible. Right. The guy can show you another way where you have patience and do a better job. Absolutely. Now, here's a question for you again. Does God use impatientness or things like that, like uh, my app not updating properly right then and there. Does God use that as a test of our faith? Yeah. Because you could be over patient, which God doesn't want you to be. When he's telling you to do something, we become so patient that we sometimes we actually do it impatient. Absolutely. We're not doing what God tells us to do. You understand that one? Oh, absolutely, brother. Absolutely, I do. But God and uses... Doing everything, I could go back and do that later or something. Right, and then when you go and do that later, it's what's, what do you call that, procrastination? Yeah, remember that we preached on uh, doers and donors and what if? You know what? Just yesterday, Steve, I decided to join an anti-procrastination group because I have a, a, a procrastinating problem. But here's the strange thing. They decided to have their meeting next week instead. <laughs> right. Some people actually get that joke. But it's, it, yeah. But God uses those things, those little things, those little spilt milks. He uses those to test us, to show us who we truly are in Christ. And if that little thing of it not updating right then and there caused me to do all that, then God knows what my true colors are. And, and like this way, it's like, uh, do I want to obey? Do I want, do I want to obey Christ or join? You know, Jesus Christ is a Christian or whatever. Or do I want to turn around and say, oh, I can always do it later, and I'm ready to repent. See, so you want the good old saying is. The good old saying plus the word is you can be too late. Absolutely, because if you decide to say, well, I'm going to do that later on, and that later on never comes for you, then what are you going to do? When you're up there meeting your maker, I'm well, a prophet Steve, uh, Bishop uh, Chaplain Andrew, didn't I tell you to do such and such? Yeah, I was going to do it you know, later on, but I didn't get a chance to, Lord. I end up coming meeting you soon. Well, see, that's the thing. We need to live today like there's no tomorrow. That way, when no tomorrow comes, Steve, we are ready to go be with Jesus. We need to be like the five wise virgins and have our lamps oiled and ready for the bridegroom to come. So, 
we don't want to put things off till tomorrow or put things off till later. We want to do them when God says to do them. Don't wait. Do them. And it's like today. There was a lady who, uh, i pray for her as well at my work because she's a manager. And today would have been her, her daughter's 16th birthday. Well, her daughter died a year ago. Don't know what the details are, but her daughter died a year ago. It would have been her daughter's 16th birthday today. And I'm sitting there talking to her and trying to encourage her a little bit because she's not feeling so well. And God spoke to me and says, I need you to do this, 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 this. And I was going to tell her about Winston and about how he died and I got to witness to him a little bit. But not the fact that I was witnessing to him, but the fact that I know what it's like to lose somebody because Winston was almost like family to me. He was like a brother I've never had. And I was going to encourage her with that story, but I never did. And being that I haven't did that, then the opportunity of that happening dwindled down to nothing because she ended up leaving before I had a chance. But see, if I had done exactly what God wanted me to do right then and there, something would have happened. But I waited right. until after the fact. And we, as believers, don't want to wait till after the fact. We want to do what God wants us to do now. Do it in the now. Because we have to. It's just the way it is. You can't, don't put off tomorrow what you can do today. Because it, Yeah, I believe that God made her a guardian angel over, over, his ma, over her mother. I can't say one way or the other because I, I don't hear that from God. But if you do, then good. But see... Don't put off today what you can do tomorrow because that tomorrow may never come. You may, I I don't know if I'm going to wake up tomorrow. Now I can assume that I am and I can say, yeah, I'll see you tomorrow. I'll wake up tomorrow morning, you know, blah, blah, blah. But I can't really say I'll wake up tomorrow because I don't know that. But from past experience, I can say if I woke up today, I will probably wake up tomorrow. So the word probably doesn't mean I will. It just means that I should be waking up tomorrow, but if I don't, then I'll be with God. Just like the old saying goes, the old prayer used to say, now I lay my head down to sleep, I pray the Lord my soul to keep, and if I should uh, die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. So with that being said, whether or not I come tomorrow and live again or I die, it, it's up to God. So I can't, just like I told Josiah last week, we can't say, I'll see you next week. Or uh, can we make, you know, can we uh, have the meeting next week? You can't really say that if you don't know that you're going to be there. So that's why I like to say, God willing, I'll see you tomorrow. Yeah, I give you three words. Ignorance brings what? Impatientness. And what does impatient bring? Sin. Yeah, but no, it brings it brings stupidity. It brings stupidity too. You're right, because a lot of times you're so impatient, Steve. It's it's like yesterday. I was what so the, what the, what the stupidity. No, I said patience. Oh, well, patience brings love, joy, peace, temperance, all that stuff. But I'm gonna give you one good word, big word, it brings wisdom. Absolutely. And like I was trying to say... And why, you, without wisdom, what you got? Nothing. nothing. Like I was trying to say, when you said that uh, impatience brings you stupidity, you're absolutely right. Because like I said, when I, when I was doing my update yesterday, I felt so dumb after I got done and it just updated by itself. I felt so dumb. I felt stupid at that moment. Like, eh, if I would have just waited, I would have had everything. So it does do right. that, but the Bible says and commands us to be patient. Let's get into our last scripture, which is Galatians 6, so, 9. Teaching you? Go ahead. No guy was teaching you? He's teaching me patience. Andrew? He was teaching me patience. You got that right. He was showing you something. He was showing me listen to listen and do it my way and it'll work better. Right. Because when I was going with RadioRepublic.com for their stream, their stream on RadioRepublic.com never updated. It's still, as far as I know right now, has not updated on RadioRepublic.com. So Galatians chapter 6. Say it again. Go ahead. Go ahead. Chapter what? 
I'll go ahead and say what you're saying. Uh, I was asking when Prince. I was asking when you already were you already 